All right, ready to build this up. Let's dry it overnight. Figure out how to wire it. Okay, let's see. I'm going to start with this green string. Okay, there's that. I'm gonna leave this off until I see how it lines up. And we will go put it on the game, or in the cabinet, I should say. Pretty straight. It's within, let's just say, let's see, that's five eighths. That's five eighths, so that's pretty good. All right, got that done. As you can see, that's an ordeal, <laughs> but that's how it goes. Okay, we can start prepping the play field now. We're pretty far along on the cabinet, so we gotta have something to put in the cabinet, right? Start with the T-nutting. We'll just tap these in place and I'll draw them in. Okay, we got the T-nuts in there. Uh, and also, you might be wondering why, why, why the play field I'm putting it together without clearing it. I already cleared this thing and sanded it and polished it like a month or so ago when I was doing another whitewater. So it's pretty much carryover from other stuff you've seen. But that's why it won't be quite as complete uh, as far as the series of videos go because I did already do that. Now, let's see. Play field rails. I got the jet bumper nails in there now. I can put the rails on. I, mean, I could have put, it on, put them on without having the jet bumper nails, but as you see, it's really tight right here and it's kind of hard to hammer them in with that in place. I used to have to pick a screw that I like the location of. These are not always.
doesn't want to. that done. What else? Let's see. All right. I'm going to do some scientific stuff. Wait just a minute. Okay. Uh, I'm going to deal with a couple things up front before I really get too far into this play field build. So the biggest issue that we have with whitewater are two things when, when it comes to getting it uh, put together and everything working properly. The new play field, these recesses are too shallow. They're not deep enough. Then if we add to that, on top of that, the new ramps are thicker. I'm not going to go into the ramp issue yet because I don't have that in my hands. I'm, I'm dealing with this first, but I will just show you uh, what I'm talking about. So here's the replacement play field. This is perfectly smooth. This washer right here fits perfectly flush in the recess for the ramp. Same thing over here, perfectly flush. Now I'll put this little set of calipers on here. That is 1.77 millimeters. Push this out of the way. We'll come over here and take a best look we can over here at the original. Okay. So then we have, I'll zoom in, and we have the original. This fits well inside of there. It's not flush, it's deeper than. Let me see what, how, how much more we can fit, I'll get another washer. Here's another washer. Okay. Now that fits flush. Let's see what that is. That's 3.4. So 1.7, 3.4, this is roughly one point, let's just generalize and just say it's 1.3 millimeters deeper. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's gonna be an issue. All right, so these, these recesses are 1.3 millimeters too shallow. Okay, so here are the new ramps. Here's the old ramp. The old ramp is 3.08 millimeters thick. Now that's exactly how deep that recess is. Let's look at the new ramp. The new ramp is 3.86. So it's almost a full millimeter thicker. So where's our issue? Well, we got two issues, right? This is one millimeter too thick, and then the recesses are 1.3 millimeters too shallow. So we're two millimeters too thick. And what's gonna happen is when I put this ramp in place, this replacement ramp, when I put it where it goes, it's gonna be like a big speed bump because the recess isn't deep enough and the ramp is too thick. So what are we gonna do about that? What can we do about that? Should we mill this down? We could. It's a little bit of a, it's not, it won't be pretty, but it'll be covered. We can do that. Let me think about that. I think I might do it that way. Let me do this. Just gonna mark where it lands. I won't mark where it lands in each spot. I can barely see that. Okay. All 
All right. I would need that to be recessed. How can I, how can I recess something like that? Probably with the four snow bits going to be my best bet. Um, I'll probably have to hit it a few different times across this this channel, but that's probably my best bet. Let me let me go that route with it. Now this is this will be you know this is just going to be done in real time. It's not planned out. I mean it's just it's something I run into, and I'll. I'll see what it takes to clean this thing up. We can do it. All right, now we gotta clean that up a little bit more still. Yeah, I might just use my file here. Make sure I don't have any burrs. No, it's not quite, you know, I mean, it's not terrible looking or anything like that, obviously, but, you know, it's not as neat looking as it was when they made it, but it's going to work. The ramps are going to fit. It's going to play right, and you're never going to see it. I mean, that's really what some of this stuff comes down to. You know, you, you got to... You gotta make choices. Do you want it to look pretty in in spots that nobody's ever gonna see, or do you want it to work right? Just kind of cutting away these last little bits. Okay, we drilled out the recesses. Now we're gonna just clean it up. This is more just for presentation purposes. It's also gonna get some of these little burrs off the edges. None of that's stopping the ramp from seating properly, but um I'm gonna use this little teeny block of wood and this little piece of sticky 80 grit. I'm just gonna get in here best I can. Those things look pretty flush now. Everything's nice and all the edges are sharp. No need to get onto the back side of that. I already went over that, but if I didn't, it's because we just want to hit the landing pad portion. Okay, here are the recesses all cleaned out. I know they don't look pretty, or not as pretty as they did, but everything's within its recess, so we're not outside of the recess, so we don't have any areas of damage. Um, and, you know, the trade-off is going to be that these ramps are going to actually fit now. Let me see if I can set up a decent vantage point here. I'm going to zoom in. I think this will show it. Okay, so here's um, this ramp. I don't know how well that shows, but you can see it's nice and flush, smooth transition. The plastic is equal with the wood. That's what we want. Let's check the other ramp. Same thing, even, smooth transition, no problems. Now I would say, and I'll check it over here and see if I'm right or not, but I would say we would have the same issue with these reproduction ramps, even if we put them on a factory play field. So I'll just put it on there, we'll see. This one sets in there pretty good. I don't see anything wrong with that, honestly. Uh, this one's got the speed bump effect, so this ramp in particular is too thick. Uh, the other one, no problem, it works, but this one in particular, it's got that speed bump effect, so you would probably wind up doing that on even the original playfield when reusing these, or when using these ramps. Fix the ramps, we're going to have to deal with that very same issue on the upper playfield. Um... I'll go over that in detail as far as the ramp recesses. We're going to be able to handle that a little bit differently on two of them, that front lip. Well, I'll talk about it real quick just so we're staying on the same page of where we were at. Uh, 
Now this is an original play field, so it's gonna be recessed further, but on this one, we'll be able to very easily just sand this down on the reproduction to the level we want it to be. This one is tricky, very tricky. We'll have to see how it fits. If it doesn't fit well, you know, there's, you can maybe do the Forstner thing, which you run out of real estate here. We'll have to figure that out. This one doesn't concern me too much. This is just kind of like a drain type ramp. It doesn't really have a lot of flow to it. This one is the biggest issue you'll ever face on a whitewater. This one is one of the worst problems there, there are. Because um, if we don't get this one just right, the ball is going to get trapped there. And the ball still can get trapped there. I mean, there's the design flaw in the game. I can't correct everything that's wrong. It's kind of like the mode start uh, balance out we were talking about with IJ. It's just some of these games have just design issues. You know, they're known for this happens and that happens. And one of the things that can happen is every 30 or 40 balls, if you hit a slow roller up here, you, you can get the ball trapped in between the exit of this ramp and the entrance of this play field. As long as we get it pretty close to where just a light shake will clear it without having to take the glass off, that's good. Anything less than that, uh, it depends on how often it, it traps it. I mean, if you hit a slow roller or once in a blue moon it gets trapped, okay. I mean, you can only do so much. But, I mean, if it's getting trapped regularly, it's a problem. But ideally, I like to get it to not trap at all. That would be perfect, right? That's what I'm going for. And I'm going to work towards that. I know the problem. But if I can't get it to that point, if, I, if once I assemble it, if I just shake it a little bit and the ball rolls out, I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm, I'm reasonable. Um, you know, because I understand I can't, I can't go back and redesign everything. We're going to do that, too. That's something else we got to do. All right, I'm going to take a break. This is taking a lot out of me.